So anyway, I'm going to cover how I'm going to fix this hole in the cut. Because once again, all I did was I turned the head upside down before I colored because I didn't want to have waste a bunch of color. And I just went like this and I just cut the hair off. Well, you can see what happened. Okay, right there, nice and short. And so I ended up using, um, using a little bit of a side sweat fringe and being able to use it for a demo anyway. But now I thought, okay, what can I do? What can I do? So hello from Germany and Montreal. Thank you for joining me. Pop on here, let's uh, see who else is on. Where are you guys joining from? Perfect, welcome. Okay, because this is a structural change that I need to make, I'm actually wetting the hair down. Many times I'll fix things with texturizing or I will um, you know, just work things when it's dry. But if something is this structurally off, such as that, I think you guys can see that. I hope you've never done this particular thing, but <laughs> I, I did it recently. So after almost, I don't know, 38 years of doing hair, I still just jack this one up. So hi, Norway, Argentina, nice, nice. Okay, so before I begin this, because obviously the only thing we're going to be able to do to fix a hole in a haircut is you have to cut everything around it shorter. So in relationship, it is not as short. So that being said, this is a very, very aggressively short um, spot in a really bad area. So very fortunately though, we have High London, Miami, Ukraine. Oh my gosh, you guys are coming here from everywhere, from New York. Thanks for joining today. So uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Sana Bredo and I'm a uh, national lead educator for KMS. And I also have my own education company called Serious Beauty and a membership called Sharp Scissor Society. And I'll talk a little bit about those as I go. But um, my passion has always been educating and you know, kind of shortening the time between, um, oh, what do I wanna say, the distance between time and comprehension so that things kind of um, come together quicker. So what I wanted to share with you today is, once again, how to kind of eliminate this hole that I've created in my haircut. And it is aggressively short. So only thing I can do is I can take everything around it shorter so that it becomes something that is not um, out of place. Now, as I'm looking at this, one of my favorite tools to use, and there's Russia, Madeira, Brazil. Gosh, you guys, thanks. I feel, feel good. Thank you, I'm glad you like my tutorials. My felt head, you like her? So the problem area is where Egypt, Egypt, Iran. Okay, I'll stop with that. Okay, so the shortest area right now is in the crown. The crown area is what dictates to me everything that's going on in the cut. From here, basically the high point of the head into this crown area, everything um, flows from this point. If this is too short, you're kind of stuck. So that's what we're, we're stuck with today. So my goal is going to be to blend out this short area into the other pattern pieces. So into the, the back area, into the top and into the sides while leaving most of my perimeter intact so that my poor client doesn't feel like she's completely bald. So, uh, yes, I'm going to use that as a guideline. That is going to be, maybe not a guideline, but my guide to length. I'm not going to be cutting blunt though. I'm going to be cutting, um, using a point cutting technique so that there are some shorter pieces and longer pieces. So it won't be a blunt <laughs> round layer at that length. So once again, there it is. There's the pretty one right there. So the first thing I'm going to do, because I'm blending out into those different areas, I'm going to create myself a um, kind of a halo section across the crown of the head so that I know um, where my pattern is going to go and I can maintain an even length as it's moving across the crown area. So I'm going to come in and just create this circle right around the crown. Now there was a haircut, I actually had it in the 1980s, 
And it was, I think it was a Paul Mitchell educator that did it on me. I think it was Scott Cole, actually. If I remember correctly, I was a model for a hair show. Just beware, if you're ever a model for a hair show, you they get to do what they want, pretty much. Um, anyway, it was called the Zapecki, which meant flathead or something like that. They took this entire crown area, twisted it, and then cut it off right here. I mean, literally, that was the shortest point, and then everything fanned out from that, but it was a really cute little graduated cut, so it was like this anti-head shape. So that, it was really fun. I'm not gonna be doing that because this is layered and the length is around the sides. Hi, Canada. Okay, so some of you are excited to see this, I see, okay. Alrighty, wish me luck. How many of you are going to ABS this weekend in Chicago? Anybody, anybody? I wish I could go. I wish I would have made the, the effort to go. It's just so busy doing shows and stuff myself that I need to go to one and just enjoy. Um, I believe um, my friend Jacob Kahn is going to be there teaching. Sydney Ann Lopez, who's a fabulous um, artist for, well, she's uh, representing Goldwell um, with the color that she's doing. That's going to be great. Okay. So see how this is sitting off of the back of the head? Oh, Sharp, Sharp, Sharp Scissor Society is amazing. Thank you, Martine. I appreciate that. Okay, here's my sectioning. Right there. Okay. Well, that's a good one. Okay. Okay, so basically what I want to do is I want to work from the center out. The center is where the shortest piece of hair is from here. So I'm gonna be working with a like a cap shape moving around the head. Waiting for the show. Awesome. Okay, so I've got my short piece and I'm going to use pivoting sections all the way around with a point cutting technique, or I might actually freehand slice it. That would make it a little bit um, freer, not quite as structured as a point cut. So I will take a central section right down the middle. Ooh, baby, look at that, right there, right in the middle. So. And it actually, unfortunately, gets slightly shorter underneath. So it even tucks in tighter, okay? Okay, so here we go. Like I said, I'm going to use a freehand slice because the only thing you can really do to get rid of a hole is to cut everything around it shorter. So I lost my little guide, come back in. Okay, wow, okay, so. Now, this would be very scary to do on a client, but if you did cut the hair that short, your options are either to just let it not blend or come in and work to a little bit of an increase in length. So I'm just kind of closing my scissors just to create a really jagged edge on that. Those, yes, those are some very short pieces. Unintentional, I was explaining at the beginning that what I had done was I took this mannequin, tipped her upside down, and cut all of her hair off because I didn't want to color all the hair. And I knew it was going short, so I thought, oh, no big deal. Well, I caught the crown. So hopefully we're not um, cutting our client's hair like that. Upside down, anyway. Okay, so this is working out. Okay, so I've got my shortest point, and then working that into a little bit longer um, area. I anticipate the bottom being more of a problem than the top, just because of the occipital bone and how, um, how the hair hugs the head. So let's look at this. Back up just a touch. I wanna see what's going on. Kind of stopping where I know that my um, halo section was. Ooh, look at that, you guys. Okay, I'm just gonna come out, I'm gonna carve. carving through, leaving some long pieces. So I'm going to have a visual blend, not necessarily a technical blend. Okay, so you can see that I've got some of those short pieces sitting inside of a little bit longer hair so that we're going to get a little more texture. And I'm just looking at that. It's bringing it in closer to the head, um, not too bad. 
we'll see. I always like to just kind of um, play with what I have on the head. Okay, so before I go into the nape area, I'm going to continue around and blend this, that one short point right in the crown, blend it out a little bit. So I'll go ahead and pivot. Now earlier someone mentioned my Sharp Scissors Society. This is my membership program that I have. And let me just concentrate for a second. And what I do inside of the membership is I take the back pocket techniques that I use on my Instagram and I expand on those. So I call them expanded back pocket techniques. They're these professionally done videos that download, um, they, they load once a week into the membership. And I take the, the techniques I'm doing and I expand on them, kind of like what I'm doing right now, only it's all teaching, it's all about that specific technique. So you can kind of uh, shorten that distance between time and comprehension for certain techniques that you're wanting to learn. The membership is um, $9.99 a month, or you can get a 20% discount if you are um, joining for the year. And you get 10% off on all my tools. So my angel blades that I'm using right now, and then we've got some more um, really fun tools coming out soon. Okay, so I've got that visual blend, not necessarily technical blend, because if it were technical, it would be very, 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 very short. So continuing around with that pivoting section, pivoting right off the crown area. And I don't want to take everything quite as short as what my hole is. So I'm coming in and I'm starting just as short as what the hole is and then working my way out. Okay, so I can see some weight that I'm going to have to blend down from here, but that's okay. Let's go out from the front here. Okay, so continuing that section around, stopping basically where that halo shape was. Okay, now this is a great one right here. You can really see this well. Okay, look at my hole, which is back here. Okay, remember that was our, that's our point we have to blend out. So I'm going to come in and just slice this out, getting a little longer. So my, the, my finger angle is getting longer towards the edge. So this is going to just cut the head, be a little bit spiky in the back, and then we'll move into softness around the front. Continuing to pivot. Like I said earlier, this is like one of the worst nightmares for, um, for us as stylists because that crown area dictates everything else that's happening in your haircut. Um, question is, how long do the videos get saved on my membership? They're in there um, forever. So once you, um, once you sign up, you have access to the entire library. And I started in April and there are three a month plus a live each month. So um, at the end of the month, I combine all three techniques that have dropped into the membership. And I do a full haircut where I'm live on Zoom and you get the Zoom link and that's stored in the membership as well. But you can ask questions during that time and, um, and see how it all fits together into one, one haircut. Because we can learn techniques, but unless they become applicable um, on the daily, it, you know, it doesn't really matter, does it? You gotta be able to use the different things that we learn. Okay, continuing around, just continuing to pivot. Some of the hair is longer, some is shorter, but I want a loose, um, a loose visual blend. Okay, so we're getting shorter there, I like that. Okay. So this is basically working um, a layering pattern from short to long. So I'm utilizing the, the hair in the crown as my shortest, and I'm working to a little bit of length as I move out into that halo section. I could do a uniform layer if I wanted to, and that would mean that it would be round following the head shape. This one is actually getting longer towards the bottom. Either one is considered layering. Okay, this is where we have to go in and get a little bit more aggressive. Oh, baby, that's a shorty. But she isn't looking too bad. Ooh. Does need to be blended out in the bottom. 
Okay, loving the shape. Awesome. Thank you, Brett. Okay, so let's get a little bit. Sometimes all you can do is just fake it. You know, like right here, I told you that was my shortest point and it gets shorter like underneath instead of on top. I'll probably do a little texture, you know, with my texturizers with that. I don't think I have them with me though. I'm not at the salon today. I just got done doing a, um, a live program for Beauty Care Choices, which is on Facebook. And I was talking about a new launch that KMS has called Conscious Style. So that was fun. Okay. All right, so let's pull this up and take a look at her. Okay. That's not too bad. Not too bad. Okay. Now the trick is going to be to kind of um, debulk this area while keeping some of this length. Fortunately for her, shags are really in the style right now. And so she's going to be um, rocking it. I recognize a lot of people that were on um, on the live last week that I did, where we did the wolf bangs. Um, I had no idea what a wolf cut was and got some education there, which I thought was awesome. And basically it, it turns out, I looked up, I've been doing a lot of research on it and it's pretty much anything that's like a shaggy mullet type of a look. So I don't know that I actually did um, the wolf cut, but if anybody else can name it wolf cut, so can I, so. Okay, so let's work down now. I've, I've blended out this um, halo shape section. Now I'm going to blend actually into the nape, the sides, and the top. So just coming down, I need to narrow this out. So let's do, let's go this way instead. Okay. So I'm just taking slight diagonal sections and I will go through and work this area shorter. Oh, I wish I had my razor with me. I'm gonna go like this, I'm just gonna carve. So almost like a razor um, would, would give that type of effect. So I'm just opening and closing my scissors ever so slightly as I move through the hair. And this is taking it a little bit tighter without it being um, too uniform in length. So just open and close. I'm bringing that in a little bit tighter. Do you guys do a lot of short hair? How many people do short hair? Give me, give me some hearts. A lot of hearts. I love doing short hair. Short hair is like my favorite thing because I feel like the closer we get to the scalp, the more we're sculpting the hair. So this is not, um, necessarily a, an incredibly technical haircut. This is a little bit more freeform, but you can see with my partings and my sections, the way that I'm elevating the hair, um, the way that I'm cutting the hair, there is a consistency to it. And that's what's important as you're working through the different areas of the head, is that there is that consistency which creates your shape. So I'm working all in the, the nape area right now, and that whole area is done with this uh, kind of a deep carving into the hair. Starting at the same point, which is about, you know, half an inch long, just like the rest of it. Because really, this is what has to grow right here, so it doesn't matter necessarily what's happening with the rest of the hair. Okay. And that's going to free up some movement, reduce weight, but not, she'll still feel like she has a little bit of hair. She won't feel scalped. This um, video will go up onto my IGTV videos. I've been doing so many reels lately, um, which is how many of you found me, that um, I'm starting to do a little bit more IGTV, a little bit longer format now. Blending that down into the sides. So now I'm on another section, another um, pattern piece. 
there's my shortest point up here, so I'm kind of going off of that. So as I go in, I'm about that length. Is there anything you guys would like to see on these live videos? I plan on doing, you know, one a week or so. Um, just after I'm done doing other things in my studio, I thought, I'd, you know, why not pop on and share some things? But is there anything you'd really like to see? Oh boy, I I don't know why it doesn't load comments. There we go. Okay, perfect. Continuing through, just working with those slight diagonal sections and reducing the bulk, but keeping some of the length. Okay, and I like how that's kind of opening up around that ear area. I think that's really pretty. Okay. Okay. Other side. This one's going to be fun because I'm going to be working behind my hand instead of in front of my hand because I need to keep my um, my holding hand in line with the line that I'm cutting. So to, just to keep consistency. Like I said, even though it's free form, there is a lot of structure to it still. So coming in, my my parties are slightly diagonal forward, meaning my hand needs to be in that shape. I can't go in and go straight because that would place something vertical. And whenever you're working with your partings, a vertical parting gives you a narrower shape. Diagonal will start to give you a wider or a rounder shape. And so if my, my hand isn't consistent from side to side, I will get a different shape. I don't know if you've ever done that where you um, actually come in and your shape sits differently from side to side, but that could be one reason. In. Ooh. So I'm going to come up and then right on top. Working my way around. So are you guys on lunch, not at work? What are you, uh, I don't know where you're all hailing from, but I tried to come on right around Pacific. I'm in Pacific time, so I'm uh, on the West Coast. Be kind of fun to watch a tutorial on lunch. Okay, there we go. I love the color on this too. This was a really, really light blonde mannequin, and I used some of the Goldwell Pure Pigments on it. Um, they're, they're pink, and it just colored it really beautifully. Okay. Almost all the way around. Carving from the inside out, making sure that my starting point is about the same length as my crown. Okay. Coming from underneath on this one. So she'll have some short hair for a little while, but not too, not too long. And even though it's short, there still is that feeling of length with the, um, with the, the pieces. Like I said last week, we just got in our angel blades, so we've been shipping them out, which are my white scissors. Um, we should have some more six inches coming in. There's some, some people, depending on when you ordered, um, you may not have received yours yet because we we're shipping in the order that they came in. And I've had a lot of questions on um, like tightening and, and sharpening, not, not sharpening, tightening and you know, the tension on them. And really when, you take, when you're taking care of your scissors, you should be wiping them down and oiling them each night and just adjusting the tension. Because they do, I mean, scissors get loose. You're cutting thicker hair, um, you're cutting long hair, you're trying to get through a lot of hair. It's nice to, to make sure that they're adjusted properly. So when you adjust them real quick, I think I have my stuff right over here, yeah. When you adjust them 
and you're you're working with your scissors, you should hold it by the heavy side, the tang. So you hold it here and then you just drop the scissor, kind of like that. And they shouldn't close all the way. You should have about a half an inch inside of the, um, the blade. If they get too loose and you can go like this and they jiggle, they're too loose and they'll push hair or they'll catch hair. So all you do then is you just take um, the little tool and you maybe go one turn to the right. I'll turn mine back because it was plenty tight. Um, and, and it just adjusts it, so it's, it's very easy. Then also just take a little cloth, and I like to put my oil on first. So take and put one drop right on each blade, and then I like to put one right on the screw as well. Just open and close, and that'll work any of those little hairs out of there. And then the very last thing, you just take the little chamois and wipe off the blade. And they're ready for the next day. So just a real quick tutorial on that. And then they feel wonderful when you're using them. Okay, We're, the fringe is working from the right to the left. So I want to encourage that just a little bit. So I'm going to follow my partings with that flow. Here we go. And then I'm going to increase in length. So I'm going to slightly tip my fingers up to increase in length. I use this a lot on short hair when I'm working um, a side swept type of a fringe. It leaves the, um, the perimeter long and the interior is short. And there it is. I get to go to Nashville next weekend. Are any of you from Nashville? Any Nashville people out there? We're doing a show there um, for KMS and Goldwell. I just love going there. It's one of my favorite cities. So I don't know if any of you are going to the show or not. I'll be doing styling because KMS is more of a styling company. And so I'll be in the styling room. But we're going to do some really fun, hands-on workshops. Goldwell does a color um, segment. Shannon King does a cutting segment. Uh, I believe Jacob Kahn is there with us and Sydney and Lopez. So it's going to be a fun weekend. Okay, let's see. Okay, so how do you actually blend a hole? <laughs> Take everything around it shorter. Okay, here's our little, our little spot. This was where we started. And I'm going to break into that just a little bit so that it doesn't look quite as solid in that spot. A lot of hearts on that one. Okay. Mm. And I kind of, I quite like those shaggy bits down at the bottom. I mean, if you wanted to, you could clean those off. You can see how that would be a little bit different type of a cut, but I like, I like the shaggy bits right now. I think they're really pretty. Okay, so there we have it. Um, how do you fix a hole in your haircut? You cut everything around it shorter so that it no longer is um, standing out as being the shortest point. What we did on this particular cut is I went in, created a halo shaped section around that short point and then blend it out with a carving technique so that I wasn't taking everything uniformly short because that would have just stood up. That would have looked very um, 1980s. I think I did have that cut with the big bangs. Um, so I just did that and blended out to that point and then from there started a very loose carving where I was taking the hair from short to long using those diagonal sections that created this nice movement around, around the um, perimeter. So there we go. We've got the, the side swept fringe working to a little bit more length on that left hand side. And I think she, I think she turned out pretty nice. Um, it wasn't a complete disaster. We went in and took her shorter so that that actually blended.